Thank you, Las Can Corla. And have we extra time here, Deputy, or is it just we keep going? But anyway, uh, Minister, um, just over six months ago, 50 consultants from Sligo University Hospital wrote to the Minister for Health to highlight the severe pressure being experienced at Sligo University Hospital. And just one sentence from that letter basically says it all. They say, we have never seen the demand on our services so high, nor the morale of our staff so low. And according to um, the consultants at SUH, uh, Sligo University Hospital has hospital bed occupancy routinely over 110%, with somewhere between 30, 40, 50 admitted patients without a bed. They say this is an everyday occurrence. And for the record, Minister, today there are 45 patients on trolleys at Sligo University Hospital, and that's in the middle of May, the third highest in the country. Now, Sligo University Hospital is almost always in the top five, or the worst, whichever way you want to look at it, when it comes to numbers on trolleys, and today they're in the top three. But unfortunately, Minister, the critical situation at Sligo University Hospital is simply a microcosm of what is happening in the entire sale to region. That's Donegal, Sligo, Leitrim, Roscommon, Mayo and Galway. The Irish Hospital Consultants Association has issued a statement this week and it follows on from a similar statement last year, except this year the statement is worse. So this time, Minister, we're talking about a statement from a national organisation, not just from the consultants at Sligo University Hospital. And what they've said is that patient health in the West and North West is at risk due to excessive delays to care. So they're singling out that region, the Celta region, and this is what they're saying. Minister, they quote a raft of statistics to make their argument. And in truth, some of those statistics are really frightening. They look at the overall picture concerning waiting lists, trolley numbers, and new hospital beds, or the lack thereof. And I just have, in the, the minute that's left to me, I just want to quote a few of them for you, to put them on the record. They say, public hospitals in the South Region Healthcare Group have unmanageable waiting lists, with over 131,000 people waiting for care. They talk about waiting lists for outpatient appointments, inpatient, day case treatments and procedures in the region have increased by 3% since the start of the year and by 42% since 2015. Now, Minister, uh, the government's own plan of 443 million, which is the waiting list action plan, has set a target to reduce waiting lists for outpatient appointments and inpatient and day case treatments and procedures this year by 10%. Yet, what has happened in the Celta area? They have increased by 3%. And of course, this is happening because we don't have the beds and because appointments and operations are routinely cancelled. Minister, I'm fed up coming in here speaking about Sligo University Hospital, and as I said, now we see that there's a much there's a wider picture in the whole region. Unless significant investment is put in to the Celta region, both in terms of beds and employment of consultants, year after year, we'll have these statements from the Irish Hospital Consultants Association, Remind and they're getting Mark. worse year on year. Mr. Burke. Thank you, uh, Cahirlach, and I welcome the opportunity to address the House on this extremely important issue and send apologies for the Minister for Health. I and the Government acknowledge that waiting times for many hospital procedures and appointments are unacceptably long, and we are acutely aware of the great distress that this causes patients and their families. Our waiting lists were far too long before the pandemic, but have worsened as a direct result of COVID-19. The Government has adopted a twin-track approach of investment and reform to deal with the issue. 
On the 7th of March, the Minister for Health published the 2023 Waiting List Action Plan, which is the next stage of the multi-annual approach to sustainability to reduce and reform hospital waiting lists. For 2023, funding totalling €443 million Euro is being allocated to tackle waiting lists, with €363 million of this being allocated to 2023 Waiting List Action Plan to implement longer-term reforms and provide additional public and private activity to clear backlogs exacerbated during the pandemic. The remaining €80 million Euro of the €443 million Euro is being targeted at various measures to alleviate community primary care waiting lists. Through this plan, we are fast-tracking the development of a new elective surgery hubs in Cork, Dublin, Galway, Limerick and Waterford. Based on a successful Reeves Centre in Talla University Hospital, these will have a short-term impact on waiting times. For the longer-term investment last December, of the Government approved the preliminary business cases and preferred sites for elective hospitals in Cork and Galway. The HSC expects to be able to submit business cases with a recommendation to Government to go to tender by the final quarter of this year. The Sealta University Health Care Group 6 hospitals serve a significant portion of the population, covering more than 830,000 people. The Government's commitment to the group can be seen in the increase in the combined budget of the hospitals and group to €999 million in 2022, up €194 million since 2018. Budgets 2021 and 2022 in particular have provided significant amounts of funding for large-scale permanent expansion of health service workforce and investment in capital projects. For example, staffing in Sligo University Hospital at the end of December 2022 was at 1,907 whole-time equivalents, an increase of 70 from the end of 2021. For Letterkenny University Hospital, sale to have advised staff has increased by 323.94 whole-time equivalents from 1,768.68 to 2,092.62 whole-time equivalents by the end of 2022. For University Hospital Galway, comprising both of Merlin Park and University Hospital Galway campus, by the end of February 2023, there were 4,286 staff whole time equivalents and an increase of 13% since December 2020. Over the last five years to March 2023, overall consultant numbers have increased by 104. Resources have been allocated to provide increases in bed capacity, with Sailta reporting 11 beds open in SUH since 2020, 32 beds in UHG, and 28 beds in Letter Kenny. A range of strategically important capital projects are in train across the region. Some projects have been recently uh, delivered, such as the 56 million euro radiation oncology facility at Galway, with treatment of patients commenced on the 19th of April 2023. Other major developments are at various earlier stages in the capital process, with projects to deliver extra capacity and services advancing at a number of hospitals. For example, a new 50-bed ward at Portiuncle University Hospital is currently under construction. These investments show the commitment of the Government, Department and the HSC in improving service delivery and meeting the needs of patients and the population in the North North West area. Governor Abbott. And you quoted a lot of figures there, and one of the figures you quoted was the 443 million. That's to cut waiting lists by 10%. Yet, since the beginning of the year, as I said a few minutes ago, waiting lists have increased by 3% in the Celta region. 3,400 people have been added to the main hospital waiting lists in the Celta region since the start of the year because the shortage of beds is so severe that severely ill patients are admitted and essential surgical and other care has to be cancelled. And that's what's happening. But Minister, what the Irish Hospital Consultants Association are saying here, they're not just speaking about an overall picture. They are saying quite clearly that patient care and patient health in the West and the North West is at risk due to these excessive delays to care. It is worse in the Celta region than it is anywhere else. Now, you quoted stats there about beds. I can only quote what's in front of me from the Irish Hospital Consultants, and they say just 69 additional inpatient beds have been opened over the past three years at all hospitals in the Celta group. And they say that amounts to 7% of the national total. Minister, 
we have 16% of the population. So according to the Irish Hospital Consultants, we're not even getting half the number of beds that we should be getting. And when I raised this issue last November here with the Minister, and I raised it specifically about SUH, he talked about the fact that they're looking at progressing um, the ED modular unit the ICU isolation rooms and the 42-bed ward block extension. Minister, where are these now? They were at a very early stage last November. Unless we see immediate progress here, Minister, we're going to keep getting these statements from the Irish hospital consultants. And in truth, people in the West and Northwest are getting worse care than anywhere else you, in the country. It's as simple as that. That's what they're telling us. Not me saying it. I'm just relaying their words. Minister. Thank you, uh, Kirk. And again, uh, thank uh, Deputy Harkin for raising this issue. As has been acknowledged, many patients are waiting an unacceptably long period of time, where significant work continues to positively impact on waiting times and improve pathways to elective care. Acute hospitals are still impacted by operational challenges arising from the pandemic. For the Celtic group, geography is a major challenge as the population is dispersed and mostly rural with approximately one-sixth of the national population spread across one-third of the land area of the state. To address these issues, in addition to the waiting list action plan funding, there has been significant increases in budgets allocated to hospitals under the group, including an increase in SUH's budget from £145 million in 2019 to £175 million in 2023. Galway has seen its budget in the same period increased by over 70 million to 441.7 million euro and letter kenny has risen from 142.7 million euro to 177.8 million euro in 2023 the government recognizes the importance of investment and is committed to continuing with the hse the hospital group and individual hospitals in ongoing investment in the strategic development of services in what is a challenging and geographically dispersed area through investment and reform, this government is working to sustainably reduce the reform, to, to reform hospital waiting lists and reduce times and waiting times that will deliver improved access to care for patients throughout the North, Northwest and the whole state. Thank you, Kaila.